In this video, I want to show you how to use groups. So the first thing that you need to do is if you're on your profile page like I am, go up to the masthead at the top and click on the link that says home. Now, you won't have this yet if you haven't joined any groups, but in your feed, what happens is anything that is a, um, a group posting will show up and let me see if I can find one. Here's a good one. Uh, this one is, <clears throat> the group is called Dudes with Dogs. And if you were to click on that, you can open it in a link and you'll see that it's basically a group where people share all of their pictures of dogs and, and how much they love their dogs. And that's kind of a cool thing. If I scroll down further, I'll see that there are probably other things that I have shared um, or other groups. This is another good one. Artists trying to make a living creating art. <clears throat> Let's take a look at that. So basically what groups do is they share posts and uh, stories and, and information to a like-minded group of people. So in this instance, this is all the people who are sharing things about their art and also stories about their art in this artist trying to make a living group. And so in these groups, what you want to do is you want to go through and you want to um, look at other people and comment about what they're doing and share their links. Uh, for instance, this is, this is kind of a cool thing. I, I like it by this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on share and I can share it publicly and it's been shared to my timeline. Or the other thing that you can do when you click on share is you can share it um, in one of your groups um, or on a page you manage. So that's another good way of sharing information is on those things. So we'll go over that in a second how to do that. The other thing that it's kind of good for is <clears throat> if there are other artists who like your work or you like their work, it'd be kind of cool if you actually clicked on their thing and added them as a friend if they're doing stuff that's kind of um, cool and you want to continue a relationship with them and see more of their stuff, then it'll show up in your feed. So groups are a good way of finding new people and becoming interested in what other people are saying and commenting in some sort of, um, in a quality way. I think that's kind of important. So when you're looking at something and you see, for instance, I like this, this drawing, um, and you click on the see more, and she's talking about her work and she's talking about what she did. And this has a nice drawing. I like the graphic design. And if you scroll down, you can see that <clears throat> other people have made the effort to comment on what this person is saying. So it's a good way of, of giving them a, a a good feeling sharing something nice but also to sort of promote yourself so one of the things you need to do is not just post to groups but participate so if you look at what I've done here I've tried to actually say something meaningful not just <coughs> a comment like this is great but actually say what I like about the work so that person gets some positive feedback. One thing that I won't do is I won't comment on things I don't like and I also won't comment uh, criticisms or any kind of negativity. I think you need to stick with the adage that um, anything that you do on the internet, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. It really does hurt people's feelings when, when you're negative on Facebook about their work. So let's take a look a, a little bit more at some of the things that groups are good for. So groups are good for finding other friends. They're also good for finding like-minded people. And they're also good for sharing your own work to give a shout out. So let's talk about a little bit about how to find groups you like and also where they're going to show up. So I think we need to return to this left-hand bar. And I'm going to go back over. All of these are the groups that I have favorited. These are groups that I want to see in my feed and so on and so forth. And those groups, generally what I do is I turn on the notifications. Some groups you may have way too many notifications. And so you may want to either just go to friends posts or the highlights for the group, okay? So those are some ideas, or you can turn off the notifications completely if it's clogging your feed too much. But that means you're gonna have to take some time to go find those groups every day and go through them. As you scroll down, you'll see in the left-hand bar, uh, there's a sort of grouping of the groups on your, on your bar. What you can do is click on more. 
When you click on more, what pops up for you is the groups that you manage. So these are all the groups that I'm actually uh, sort of in charge of. And, um, and I have to decide whether or not I'm going to let people post in them or let people join and so on and so forth. And it's kind of interesting because each one of these groups has a purpose for me that I've actually thought quite a bit about. So the first group, Survey Art History, is a group that I use to communicate with my students and to share art historical information. And um, so it's a required group that my students need to join, although other people join. And what I do is I post lessons, I post videos, and so on and so forth. So it's a very specific audience. The second group here, Gay Wildlife, Bears, Otters, and Cubs, that's actually a grouping of, of people who are interested in looking at images of gay men and s the different kinds of body types are referred to as bears, otters, and cubs. Then I've got this other group called homoerotic art, gay art and aesthetic. You can see that each one of these groups is kind of a way of sharing information that I have, but I created these groups specifically so that no one would censor me when I was putting things up there. So that's kind of important. When you create a group, what you do is you kind of own the audience and you can decide who gets to see stuff and not see stuff. It's better to be as inclusive as possible, but you're going to need to keep some of the haters out of there. And you're also going to need to, um, it's a safe place for you to post your own work without someone censoring you, okay? Now, <clears throat> that's a little different than the groups you're in. The groups you're in are groups sometimes that are moderated and you need to actually um, make a decision about whether or not they're going to allow you to show your work and that kind of thing. A lot of these groups have specific rules about what they're willing to share and what they're not willing to share. The numbers that you see on, on the sides are what the posts are. So one of the things to look out for is activity in the groups. If there's a lot of activity, that's a group you want to be in. If it gets 20 plus, that's great. But if you look at this group, this I, last time I went to this the, was a month ago and there's still no new posts in it. So that's something to think about, is that you want to go and join groups that have a lot of um, activity in them so that, you under, that it, you're not wasting your time just putting things up there. Now, the other thing about these groups is you can either add them to your favorites, which they'll show up immediately, and you can also decide whether or not you're going to... Um, whether or not you want to be in the feed and have things uh, come to you all the time. So for example, this group, um, World History and Culture, is a group that I really like uh, because basically what people do in the group is they share inf historical information about art history and cultural history and things like that. Um, I've left the notifications on for that because I kind of like seeing these things in my feed and seeing all the articles and things that people are sharing. Um, you know, some people uh, also go into these groups and share their artwork, but in general, I, I try to stick with what the spirit of the group is. So any activity that you have in these groups, you want to think about how it's going to be received by other people because you're doing this for other people. You're not doing it just to express yourself. So you have to think about how is my comment going to be received? Am I sharing something that's valuable or worthwhile? And that's kind of important. So those are some of the main ideas about how to use groups. And what I'd like to suggest to you is that, um, so how do you find a group and how do you start a group? Let's talk about that for a second. So when I am looking for a group, um, I start with a key search term, for instance, gay, right? And I have homoerotic imagery at the top. There's only 219 members. That's the group that I own, but it's been very successful for me because a lot of um, art collectors are in them. The groups with high numbers, uh, for instance, this one, or uh, this gay Facebook group has 30,000 members in it. So that's a really good group for me to go into and post my stuff. Now, one of the things that I've been thinking about is you really need to keep in the spirit of what the group is. So make sure what you do is you read the group rules. One of the things that's really important about Facebook is you will be censored immediately if you share uh, images with, with genitals in them. Now, some people get away with that, but it's against the terms of use of Facebook. I'm not telling you this um, as a personal preference. I wish I could share all of my work on it. So you have to make sure that you understand that because the person who is the moderator, this guy Melvin, for instance, 
um, will delete your posts if you post something offensive. Um, and so one of the things that I can do is I can also post things that I have for sale. So I posted this on June 21st. But I think what's kind of better than, than posting, for instance, um, your work for sale and providing a link is, I've, I've been really thinking about this, is just posting an image of something that you are you want to share that you think is cool and and I think that's kind of important and it can be your own art so for instance just post your own art up there but what I'm discovering is people don't like to be marketed to they don't want to see the URL unless they're really asking for it so you have to really think about what the the spirit or the gestalt of the group is so a lot of groups what I'll just do is I'll just post uh, a painting of mine and then just hit post. Now what happens is they see this and they might get curious about it like this is a painting, right? Why is this guy posting this? So they might click on my link and then go back to my page. So if they do that, I have to think about what's going to show up when they go back there to, to research me. So they're going to see a picture of me. This is a picture of my wife and my dogs. Um, if you scroll down, this is one of the things I favorited. Um, they can they can see that um, Basically, I believe in equality for all people and that hate is bad. Um, they can also see that I'm very pro-gay. Um, and they can also see that I'm into other people's artwork. So those are kind of important things. And when they scroll down, remember that the ratio of things that you share should always be seven to eight shares of something valuable and to one or two um, of your own work or a shout out about yourself. So that's kind of important that when you are putting things on there, you want to share things that are fun, that people are going to think of as um, who you are and what you're about. So that's one of the things about groups and your, your identity on Facebook. So what I would suggest is um, you go into this search Facebook thing and you type in keywords of things that you are doing and that you're interested in. And what you do, uh, and I showed you this in earlier videos, you want to make sure that you have folders of things that um, are are things that you're willing to share or want to share that are valuable. So remember I told you you want to create folders. For instance, uh, the, the folder that I have that's called social media or the animal one. Um, has images that I, for instance, uh, images by other artists that I really dig, folders full of their work, and you should watch the earlier videos to see what I say about them, but also fun stuff like Wonder Woman and West Side Story, things that if I post them, they'll give, a peop they'll give my audience a sense of who I am. And also I can share these things in groups and people will think that they're kind of cool. So I hope that's a good intro to how to use groups and how to start groups. And I'm, I think that one of the things that you should do is once you're in enough groups then, and you have enough friends, then you start making your own groups and think about the title of the group, think about what you want to say about this group and emulate other groups but improve on them. And after a while, people will start migrating. All of this process takes a long time. It's taken me a very long time to build a following on Facebook. And so if you do something and you're not getting a lot of activity in the first three or four months, that's completely understandable. Uh, just start building your reputation. It's a long process, but I promise you, if you're positive and you go out and do your group stuff and you are um, engaging with other people and you share valuable information on Facebook, I think people will start following you and it'll lead to sales of your own art.